In this video, I figured it would be a good idea to do a year-end review of all the cars that I had driven. Um, now, I didn't really do one of these uh, in 2014. Yeah, 2014, four of the previous year. Um, and I really didn't drive a lot of cars that year either, so I don't have a whole lot to, to say. So, um, I'll just say that my favorite car for 2014 was the Nissan Altima S. I ended up renting that car for a really long time. It was the first time I'd ever rented a car for an extended amount of time. And um, that's kind of really what got this whole thing started. Um, realizing how easy it was to rent cars and um, how nice it was to drive a new car and really just for a car payment. I mean, that's what it would cost. So um, the Nissan Altima S to date has given me the best gas mileage of any car I've ever driven. And it actually wasn't a bad driving experience. It was kind of a cheap car, but you know what? It was my first car. So um, here's a little clip from that review, and uh, we'll get started in my top five list of 2015. And now we'll take a look at the outside. As you can see, the signals are in the lower part of the grill. I, didn't, I wasn't really a big fan of this. I like my signals to be up near my headlights, but uh, I think this area could have been used better for fog lights, but to each his own. Vehicle has a very unique look about it that doesn't look like a, a granny mobile to me. This. This whole front end looks a little bit more bad than just a granny mobile. However, you do have to realize this is just a four cylinder. It's not something that you're going to expect to take off at a red light and actually win. But it's fun to try. As you can see in the back lights here, I like this signal layout. This looks pretty nice. It does have one brake light up here in the middle. Obviously not illuminated when you're not pressing the brake. This vehicle, feature, this vehicle does feature pure drive. And I mentioned that earlier about how it decides to switch gears when you put it in sport mode, but not when you don't. And we'll take it for a little drive and I'll try to show that off. The trunk does feature a push button. Have the key in your pocket. Touch the button. And the trunk will open. Pretty decent sized trunk. We didn't have any size problems with this car. We're just going to take off. This is in pure drive. I'll wait for this transfer truck to go around. I'm just going to floor it. As you can see, 0 to 70 did not change any gears, and it just went. And here we go with sport mode. I'll come to a complete stop. Actually, there are some cars coming. Where to go? On the floor. As you can see, it acted a little differently there changed gears and acted like it was actually going somewhere. Enough of that. Let's get started. So, for my favorite cars of 2015, I'm going to classify them in a top five list. However, I could not think of what I wanted to put for number five. So, I've given number five a runner-up. Uh, it was between the Chrysler Town & Country because it's a minivan. I don't like minivans. And that was why I really didn't want to give that one number five. Because it's a minivan. But at the same time, it's a really nice car. And it's got pretty much everything you need to offer. I mean, if you're going to buy a minivan, this is the minivan you should buy. And you shouldn't cheap out on some other brand just because it's cheaper. You get what you pay for. Uh, but the other nice car that I really liked was the Chevrolet Malibu LTZ. Now, 
Of course, it's an LTZ. It's fully loaded. It's everything they got to offer. But for the car, it's really not a bad car. A great price. Uh, you know, they, they come in a great price, even with the LTZ. Uh, it comes with a four-cylinder engine with the auto shutdown so that it doesn't waste gas. It's overall a really nice car. So I have two for number five, and that would be the Chrysler Town & Country and the Chevrolet Malibu. Here are clips from both of those, and we'll move on the list. This is the 2014 Chevrolet Malibu. In this particular video I'm doing a little different where I make several small videos and piece them into one big video to see just how that plays out. And today I wanted to talk about the outside body and overall look of this vehicle. I like a car company that will take a car design and make it unique. Look how far that sticks out there. There's no doubt about it when you see this car on the road. Not only is it a Chevrolet, but you probably might even notice that it's a Malibu because I don't know many Chevrolet vehicles that have this particular design. That's what I love about this car. I like to be able to look at it from any angle and say, yep, that's a Chevrolet. Yep, that's a Malibu. My biggest complaint about the Buick LaCrosse was the fact that it looked exactly like a Nissan Altima in many ways. I love the mirror signals. That's, that's a big thing for me. This car met that need, <laughs> which was a big thing for me. This big, bold front design, you know that's a Chevrolet. It's got the big Chevrolet logo. It's very unique, and you don't see another car on the road that looks exactly like that. That's what I love about this car. It's very unique and bold look. Interesting little thing I learned about this vehicle today that uh, I really hadn't noticed. Uh, when I stopped at a red light, I couldn't hear the car running anymore, and I couldn't feel it running, and I was like, what, what happened? And when I let my foot off the brake, it started back up, and at first I thought that there was something wrong with it. I thought that it had died or, or you know, something that was, <laughs> you know, uh, what do they call that? Functionally wrong, I guess. Uh, anyway kind of concerned me so I took it and just tested it took it to a parking lot and stopped and and sure enough it turned off and whenever I put my foot off the brake it started back up and then it realized I realized that it was a new feature that they've created to save gas and <laughs> that's amazing so uh, it completely shuts off when you stop at like a red light and then when you uh, when you go it starts back it's a test I don't usually do with cars is an off-road test now i get this isn't quite off-road it's just a gravel road but it is pretty bumpy it's pretty unmaintained they haven't done anything with this road in well since i was little so uh, actually they paved a part down here about 10 years ago but that was about it uh so i like to try a little bit off-road i don't usually do gravel roads with cars it's just not something i do but uh, as comfortable as this car has been riding, I thought, let's take it off-road. This is one of the least bumpy cars I've ever ridden in, I think. Um, I, it's absorbing every bit of the road. I mean, I'm able to hold the camera still, and there's just a whole lot more to offer. This particular car is the 1LTZ. There is a 1LTZ and a 2LTZ. The 1LTZ uh, starts at about 26. Today, we're going to have a look at the 2014 Chrysler Town & Country. Right off, this bold look lets you know that it is a Chrysler. And yes, it is a minivan, which kind of, you know, everyone's like, oh, it's a minivan, ugh, you know. Uh, even I, <laughs> to some degree, think it's a minivan. owned or driven a Chrysler you really don't know what sets it apart from just another minivan on the road it looks like another minivan it looks like another you know something you would just go Ugh, you know but but on the inside it's completely different and it gives you a whole different look and feel just to get started, this vehicle is the Touring model. 
the touring model is the lowest end model that they sell uh, with the least amount of features possible those features do include dual power sliding doors and a power opening hatch as well as closing doors and the closing hatch that's just a small look on the outside of everything this man has to offer because on the inside is a whole new world of difference just to go back and recap the second row here and while my camera decided to mess up getting in behind a seat set for myself not that bad really good uh, leg room couple of fingers <laughs> and uh, the rear seat DVD which isn't going to show anything because I don't have any movies in the disc player it does say disc one and disc two because uh, it has the option for an optional blu-ray player which would be disc two however uh, I don't have that because this is the base model so vehicle number four on my list of top five is going to be the 2014 Ram 1500 Bighorn Edition the Bighorn Edition was a whole lot better than the SLT because I did review both and uh, not only does it set higher but it's just overall better with all kinds of features uh, I drove two separate Bighorn Editions, one in black, one in red, with pretty much the same features. I loved both of them, and uh, if I could afford to put gas in them, I'd probably still be driving them. Uh, the Ram has brought a whole new meaning to a truck. It's not just a truck anymore. It's not a workhorse. It's not. It's it's bringing more luxury to to the class, and I feel like Ram is the first one to do that. Although Ford is doing it now with the 2015. I feel like Ram was the first one to bring luxury to the truck class with its 2014 1500 Big Horn Edition. And that earns number four on my list of top five cars of 2015. 2014, but it's my 2015 list. You get what I'm saying, right? Anyway, here are some clips of that because I think that was probably my longest review I ever did. Uh, but here is the red Big Horn Edition Ram 1500. And today, we're going to take a look at the 2014 Ram 1500. But before we get started, let's go ahead and start it up. This is the remote keyless entry. It's pretty simple. It does what it's supposed to. Lock, unlock, and panic. One feature that I do like about this vehicle is when you unlock, the lights will come on to guide your way to the vehicle. They do provide you with two keys that are actual physical keys which are not needed and two remotes which have keys inside them. So you get plenty of keys. Not much has changed recently with the design of the Ram. I know they dropped the Dodge off of it and made their own brand out of the Ram. And as you can see, it is the Big horn edition. As you can see, 
It slid a little, but it still stopped itself. This is where I took the Nissan Altima 0 to 70. Seventy, way, way back there before the Nissan Altima got here. Although I'm picking cars from the list that I like the most, I am trying to keep the list diverse so that I can attract everyone. There are truck people, there are van people, there are car people, and then there are SUV people. And I liked every one of these cars that I'm reviewing enough to where I would probably buy one. Maybe. Maybe not the Ram. I would spend a lot of money on gas. But my next car, number three. We are number three, right? <laughs> number three is the Ford Explorer Limited. It's a very big car, but it doesn't feel like a very big car. It just feels like a midsize SUV until you get in it, and then there's room out the butt. And this being the limited edition came with plenty of features to offer. Uh, heated seats front and back and everything in between. And uh, this just overall was a really nice car. I would, I could see myself owning one of these, maybe in a four-wheel drive option, but um, I could still see myself owning one of these. A really nice car, and uh, number three on my list. I liked it a lot. When you get out of the vehicle and shut the door, close the horn to let you know that, hey, I can't detect the key anymore. Let's have the lights on the mirrors. Another feature that I like at night is that it has a light under here that lights up your ground near the car. Proximity button works with locking, unlocking, if it would let me because, oh, it did, okay. Thought it was running, it wouldn't let me, but okay, it did. The moonroof up here and the moonroof back there particular button zoom out a little bit here okay this particular button will crack the moonroof open in the back this middle one will open it and then this one is for the sunshade and as you can see its power closes itself you can stop it in the middle to leave this one open or shut it all the way like I said, I'm trying to keep the list diverse, but I guess at the end of the day, it comes down to things that I liked. And so number two on my list was the Buick LaCrosse. This was a really nice car. It had everything to offer, and it was one of the higher-end models of this car. It's the leather group package, uh, and it had every feature. My favorite of this car was the panoramic moonroof. Um, I, you know, I returned this car because I couldn't afford to keep it. The rate they had me in, it, it was just a little too high, and I just couldn't keep doing it. Uh, but I did keep the car for nearly two months before I took it back. And had I been able to afford it, I think I'd still be in it because I really liked that car. It was a nice car. My only complaints were that it looked like any other car on the road. It didn't have a unique view. The front was pretty unique, but the back looked kind of like a Nissan Altima. In my opinion, it just wasn't unique. That's my only issue about this Buick LaCrosse. It was a nice car overall, but it just wasn't unique. It felt like a pretty premium car, but the suspension felt kind of cheap. And, you know, you could tell where they lacked in some areas to make up for so greatness in other areas. So, number two on my list is the Buick LaCrosse. This is the 2015 Buick LaCrosse. And today we'll do a little review about it. I am a really big sucker for cars that have the signals right here. And this car not only has a signal here, but it has one that sticks out behind the mirror that you can clearly see. I'll hit the button here and see if it'll... There you go. It's pretty bright. See the front. Really nice. Let's go ahead and hit the trunk button. Now that it's a little bit more daylight, you guys can see in a little bit better. Pretty decent sized trunk. I'll be honest, this car is a lot smaller than I wanted it to be for a premium class car as they describe it. 
it does have a button under here you can just press and it'll it's a lot smaller than I expected it to be but um, in either case it's still a pretty nice car gets the job done and it's got a nice bit of style about it when you're riding around now the cars in this particular class are the Buick LaCrosse the Nissan Maxima and the Chrysler 300 I'm not aware of any other vehicles in the particular class which is called premium vehicle uh, but if there are, I have not tested them. All doors have a proximity button which you can use to unlock and lock the doors, which is a good feature to have no matter what door you're going to. I'll go to this side because the front seat is adjusted to someone normally sitting in the front seat. I have not sat in the back seat prior to this video. Plenty of leg room which uh, honestly surprises me about this vehicle. The headroom is uh, non-existent, even though it does have sort of an area that goes up where your head should go, and then it's got this middle light and everything going on here. Uh, it's pretty non-existent. I think that's mainly because of the moonroof. It has to have somewhere to fold back into here, the sunshade and because of that, the back seat's pretty cramped as far as headroom goes. Legroom, <laughs> very nice for someone 6'4". I'm not touching anything here. And uh, I can get used to that. One of my favorite features is the moonroof. I don't know if I talked about that in this particular video. I love this sky too. Oh my goodness. I could easily wreck by watching that. Anyway. It's just it's an amazing looking sky, isn't it, guys? Anyways, <laughs> uh, the moonroof probably one of my favorite features. It is completely power. You do have the, you know this one here moves the sunshade. This one here moves the actual window. It only opens one way. It doesn't crack open. It doesn't open downward. It only opens one way. But um, I can't complain. and floored. Zero to 70. And there you're zero to 70. And now we're down to number one, and you all know what number one's going to be out of complete bias, the Chrysler 300, even though it was only a base model car. It was the cheapest end car that they offered, just like the town and country earlier in the video. This is the cheapest end model car that they make for the 300, yet it's fully loaded with leather and 8-inch touchscreen, everything you could imagine. There were some things I wished it had, but it didn't. But you can get it in higher trim levels, so why not? Why wouldn't you just go the higher trim levels? Anyway, like I said, I think it's complete bias because I'm in love with this car, but the Chrysler 300 is my number one car of 2014, and uh, here are some clips of that. Enjoy. Today we'll take a look at the 2014 Chrysler 300. This is the base model. This is not a 300C or a 300S, it's just a 300. And usually when I talk about the base model of a car, I think about ways it could be better but I'm really impressed with what the 300 has to offer at its base level cheapest package there is the horn doesn't blow when the key gets out of range because uh, it's something different that they do where it's actually just dinging inside it does have this LED ring that you see flickering. It doesn't flicker in real life, but on the camera, it flickers. Pretty visible signal. Uh, interesting little fun fact, this ring that goes around the signal turns off when you turn your signal on, I guess for better visibility. The rear is also LED and the camera really doesn't do it justice, but there's no way you're missing those blinking lights they are very bright front bold design in this car is something that I really like about it uh, 
the Buick LaCrosse had a front bold design, uh, but it didn't really have a rear bold design. It looked like just any other car in the rear, but the front, it had a nice bold design. Now this particular car has a nice bold design in both the front and the rear, and that's what I really like about it. That right there alone, I just love the look of this car. And I was explaining to someone the other day that uh, we were going down the interstate, and when you see this car in your rearview mirror, you think, that's a badass looking car. And then you think, I need to get out of their way. <laughs> because that's exactly what happens. When you're in the left lane, you're moving maybe five or ten more than the people in front of you. They're, they're looking to get out of your way. That's what they're doing. <laughs> and that's what I like. I like it that they're getting out of your way. Well, it's just overall a better experience. Better than some better than most. I hope you've enjoyed my top five list, or six list, really. And uh, I look forward to doing more reviews in the future. I look forward to doing more top five lists. I know a couple of you requested some more things about the Crosh 300, which I still have. I will do some videos on it. And uh, you guys have requested that I give you a review of my newly purchased... Wait for it, wait for it... MacBook Pro, which I am editing this video on. And uh, I will do that as well. I will have a review up as soon as possible, as soon as I decide I like it. Which, obviously, I think I'm liking it. I'm editing a video on it right now, which is something I haven't been able to do in a really long time. So, hope you guys have enjoyed, and uh, I look forward to doing more videos in the future, and I'll see you later.